Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've already done the news and talked about the great things going on. A couple more billionaires getting into the game. Uh, Ripple and uh, Brad Garlinghouse settled a lawsuit with YouTube and the IRS is really, you know, uh, knocking heads as far as like a, a new operation to bust people who are doing tax evasion, whatever. But let's, uh, let's take a step back and look at where we we're coming from, where we are at now, and potentially where we're going. And I think this is going to help you kind of get a clearer vision and just kind of get out of your head a little bit. So uh, first of all, just so you know, uh, today for reference, uh, we've got it's March 10th, uh, 2021. And Bitcoin right now is about, gosh, I, think, I want to say it's about 56,000, somewhere around there. And uh, Ethereum, yeah, Bitcoin's 56, almost 57,000. Ethereum is 1,800, Binance Coin 287, Cardano was a buck 17, and Tether's Tether. So that's what's going on in the market, just for a reference for later on. But I want to bring you back real quick and talk about the uh, four-year cycles, which we talked about uh, pretty much ad nauseum here um, on the channel. But I want to take a look back at where we were as far as Ethereum, and Bitcoin at the same time, the same or this this different bull run back in the day. I also want to take a look at what it's going to take uh, to get to that 150k, 250k, 300, 500k Bitcoin that people are talking about all over the place. And then uh, you know, just take a look at some numbers as far as uh, market cap. So let's just back up for a bit, shall we? All right. So if you're new to crypto, hey, welcome. Uh, just so you know, all this volatility that's going on, uh, it's normal. And 20% uh, swings, 40% swings uh, in the traditional market. That is like the worst day ever. People are jumping out of windows. But uh, we just call that a Tuesday here in crypto land. So uh, just uh, relax uh, <laughs> at some point. Uh, if, 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 if you don't like the percentage loss, uh, just wait a couple of days. It'll turn around. And that's usually what it is. And the big thing that uh, we're here on the channel is all about investing, not about trading so much, just investing. And this is why. So for your cycles for crypto market, you have to take a look at what happened in the past. And just so you know, it always kind of follows this, this same type of routine. There's a Bitcoin halving, which everything kind of comes off of that play. 2012, we had a halving when Bitcoin was a whopping 5 to $14. Uh, I don't remember those days. Actually, I do. A um, little, little quick side story. Uh, my son came to me and said, hey, uh, if you want, one of my friends has, uh, he's selling Bitcoin, 500, 500 Bitcoin for 500 bucks in a hard drive. And I, I asked him, I go, what's Bitcoin? He told me, I'm like, that's stupid. Who would do that? Now, here I am with the champ. So anyhow, that's just how it goes. So back in the day, it was between 5 and 14 bucks. Then you had, after the halving, then everything just, the amount of Bitcoin that miners can actually get in a, in a 10 minute block gets reduced by half having and then demand supply and demand everything rockets up all time high in 2013 then you have a massive dip or reset over the next two years then you go to the next four year cycles and that's what most of us remember 2016 you had bitcoin about a thousand bucks not too bad and then uh 2020 or 2017 you had a uh, all-time high of 19.5, then a huge dip where everything just kind of fell off the face of the planet. And then you just had a sideways action and then a reset in 2019 back to 12,000. Okay. And then coming forward, we had the halving in 2020. And then we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. But if there's any indication, it's going to look something like what we just saw in 2013 and 2017. It's just going to be an all-time high. And what's going to happen is it's going to skyrocket up crazily. And uh, what will break it is at some point you, nothing goes up forever and you have to understand that as things go up things are gonna get massively overbought so if you think like an 80k bitcoin is crazy it's coming if you think 120k bitcoin is crazy it's coming 150k bitcoin is coming that's my prediction for 2021 i could be wrong i hope i'm wrong I hope it goes to 300,000 or 500,000 i'll be happily wrong uh there but once it goes up to this this hockey stick pattern um Smart money's be like, you know what? This is a mania. This is FOMO. People don't know what the heck they're getting into. I'm out. And then once you see, and people will always say to me, well, the institutions, they're not selling. They're selling. Michael Saylor's not selling because he controls the board. Elon Musk, debatable. Mass Mutual, probably not. You know, they're going to be around for a while. But these other big institutions, corporations, hedge funds, 
they're going to be like, we're selling because we know how the cycles work. We're not here for the long haul. We're here to make uh, money and we're out just like traders. Traders are not here. They're not investors. They're here to make a, a, a quick cash and then they turn around and do whatever they want with it. Now, I and some other people are, you can be a trader and an investor. I'm a 95% investor, 5% trader. Some are 50-50, some are 25%. It doesn't matter. But you understand that there's always going to be people out there who are greedy, who are uh, manipulators, uh, people who just need to take profits. Something comes up in their lives or people that just really understand cycles. So when people say, Rob, you don't understand, it's different. It's not different. As long as people remain the same, this market will remain the same and we'll still have these massive uh, peaks and valleys. So that's what's going on. So when we take a look at this, we want to start to think about well, when's the best time to invest? The best time to invest is when it's boring as hell and nothing's going on. Because when this is happening, this was the best time to invest, 2016. I didn't get to invest here. I invested up here at the top and you can't really see my mouse, but in 2017, I invested as it was rocketing up. And then I learned my lesson and I started to invest right here in the second boring line when there was nothing going on. Dollar cost average, very boring and dull. Nobody cares, just poke around and that's it. Now, the second best time to invest, I think, is right now uh, because you are right before that huge hockey stick pattern. So uh, this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is what I am doing right now. I'm investing heavily into crypto. I still dollar cost average. I still buy the same things every day. I've actually stopped buying Bitcoin because I think it's going to retrace, but that's another, another video. But uh, I still buy uh, Cardano uh, every day. I still buy Voyager every day. And I've been getting into Swissborg. And uh, I will explain why in a, in a later video, Swissborg to me is the next Voyager. That's just how I see it. So um, this is like the great time. So when we take a look back and we say, well, what is what is going to happen uh, later on? Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can just tell you that 2021 is going to be pretty great. And really it comes down to what are your goals? Like my goal is to do really great this bull run and set myself for the next one. Um, some people are in their 80s and 90s on my channel. And they're like, I don't care about the next bull run. I'm talking about right now. So they're going to cash everything out. So it just depends on your specific goals. Maybe you're younger and uh, maybe in your 20s, 19, 18, 17 years old. And like, hey, I'll just keep... Uh, plugging away and if it crashes later i don't care uh, i want to go for the next bull run which is if we talk about four-year cycles is going to happen in 2024 because there's another bitcoin having coming just around the pipe now i think the gains won't be as much as this one but it, again it could be wrong so it's all really about what you want to do so let's talk about where we are at right now uh where we were before and where we're going so just take a look at uh, we already know where we're at right Ethereum is roughly 1800 pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin is, we're sitting at around 56,000. So if we want to take a look at what this um, bull run could potentially do in 2021, let's take a look back at where we were at before. So that is kind of like taking a look at, uh, let's take a look at March 2017, because that's kind of like a repeat of the pattern, right? So Ethereum, Check, you're gonna, this is crazy. Actually, no, I'm gonna start with Bitcoin. That's not so crazy. <laughs> so Bitcoin, back in January, 2017, was 800 bucks. Actually, no, let, me, let me blow this up. Okay, so we're talking about uh, in 2017, March, what is it? Uh, I can't get the 11th, let's say the 13th. No, I'll say the 10th. Yeah, 11, about 1200 bucks. That's how much Bitcoin was, 1200 bucks. And then it rocketed all the way up to almost 20,000. So that's about, well, 10 would be 12,000, 20 would be 24,000. So you're looking at about an 18X from here to here. Now, do I think that Bitcoin can do an 18X from 56,000? No, that's, 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 uh, it's not outside their own possibility. I'm going to show you why that's pretty improbable in a bit. But do I think that it can do a 3x or a 5x or a 6x? Sure. I don't see why it couldn't do that. Uh, but again, it would be a lot of factors to, to go into. So now that we know what's going on with uh, Bitcoin, let's take a look at what potentially we were at as far as Ethereum. And this was where it gets crazy. So if you take a look at Ethereum, and we go all the way back down to, whoa, that's 2016. 
February, look at that, March. That's not $1,763, that's $17.63. That's it, March 8th. Then on March 11th, a crazy 23 bucks and 44 bucks and so on and so forth. So just from here in March, uh, we went to $1,400. So from about 14 bucks, 18 bucks, what is that, about 100x? Yeah, 14 times 10, 140, yeah, 100x. So 100x. So that is the power of what would be considered uh, altcoins, right? Because Bitcoin can only do so much as, because there's only so much money sloshing around the world. So that's why people look at altcoins and go, and like Ethereum, uh, if, you, if you haven't read the book, um, The Invisible Machine, is that what it, uh, what it is? Yeah, I think it's what it is. Uh, it talks about, um, the foundation of, of Ethereum and how it was actually built. And when it came out, there was a lot of hatred by Bitcoin maximalists who said that the only reason that Ethereum was built was to take money out of Bitcoin and to scam you into buying Ethereum. Of course, uh, we know that's why it wasn't true, but uh, the, same, the same thing gets said again and again and again, even in, in today's uh, crypto world. So when we take a look at this, this is a pretty good deal, right? Uh, do I think that uh, Ethereum can do another 100x or whatever it is, 80x? No, I don't think it can do that, and I'll explain why. But it is not outside the realm of possibility to do for Bitcoin to do, like I said, a 5 or 6x. Maybe Ethereum. Ethereum right now is, uh, where are we at? 1800 For it to go to do a 5x? Sure. I mean, I can definitely see that. Um, a lot of things have to come into play. Uh, especially with what's going on with their um, scalability and the problems that they're having with the fees. But uh, maybe those will get resolved. I have no idea. Not me personally, it's a battle between Ethereum and Cardano. And then that's why we're always taking a look at what is going on with the market as far as all the different uh, cryptos that are out there. Just take your pick. I mean, what I do is just take a look at, uh, you know, how good is the uh, uh, foundations? How good is the, is the white paper to actually solve an issue? What is the team like? Who is the leadership with a financial backing? And you know, what kind of direction is this going? Um, that's just how I, I see these things. To me, it's it's still a business. These are these are still business and it's it's still run by people except for Bitcoin. So when you're taking a look at well, which ones can really really lead it here? Well, what kind of team is it? And then you just kind of go from there. I invest in people, not so much projects, just the people itself, and that's why I'm big into these types of things. Uh, Bitcoin because it's the first and it's already known and it's really on the on the conscious of everybody's mind. Ethereum because I mean it's the second biggest one. Vitalik Buterin and uh, all the different developers that work on Ethereum can do great things. Binance Coin I haven't invested into because uh, I can't get Binance Coin. I don't have Binance even in I can't get Binance U.S. in Texas uh, that I know of unless something changed. Cardano, I invest uh, because of Charles Hoskinson. Voyager, I invest because of Steve Ehrlich. And uh, Celsius, I invest uh, because of Alex Mashinsky. And Polkadot, because of Dr. Gavin Wood. Because, you know, Wood and Hoskinson, they already built Ethereum, so why not? So to take a look at what could happen here, let's just take Bitcoin, for example, right? So we were at, what I say, around uh, 1200 bucks uh, this time in the last bull run. So what why couldn't it go from 56,000 to 500,000 right because that makes i mean it already happened you know there was a 20x or right? just a 10x wasn't even a 20x from this time here's the thing so just you know the circulating supply is about 18.6 million right and if i want to take a look at what that would take i need to take a look at market cap calculator so if the circulating supply is 18.5 million and I want it to go to, let's say I want to go to 150,000, oops, then that means that its market cap has to be two point, almost $2.8 trillion. Right now it's at $1 trillion and look how hard it was to get there. So for it to just to make it to my prediction, $2.8 trillion. Let's talk about other people's predictions. 300,000. You're looking at $5.5 trillion. Let's take a look at the other people's predictions of 500,000. You're looking at almost, well, $9.2 trillion. $9.2 trillion. Now I want to take a look, and you think that's, you're like, well, that's, that's pretty crazy, right? Check this out. This is all the money's markets in the world. I haven't done this in a, while, a long time, so this is exciting for me. I haven't done this in a good amount, good amount of uh, space. So just so you know, 
this little square is worth $100 billion. So just keep that in mind. And this was written on May 27, 2020. So, you know, eight months ago or something, nine months ago. So just, you know, here's crypto back then. It was only a market cap of 244 billion. That was the market cap, 244. Right now, I think we're looking for sitting at 1.7 trillion out of all the crypto out there. Here's all the military spending, US budget deficit, pretty good, right? Coins and banknotes. And this right here, the budget, the US budget deficit is 3.8 trillion. Coins and banknotes, tangible currency, when, what people consider money is 6.6 .6 trillion, that's it. Uh, the Fed's balance sheet, and I'm just a little hint, it's a lot more today. Uh, 7 trillion billionaires, they own uh, 8 trillion uh, for all the different things they have. And this is a big one, gold. It's 11 trillion. I think now it's around 12 trillion. So for us to get to that 300,000, about $6 trillion, you're looking at about half the market cap of gold. Or if you take a look at, uh, let's see, the Fortune 500 companies, uh, you're looking at, wow. Oh, it doesn't really say, but you're looking at a ton of money. I think it's like 18 trillion, 20 trillion something dollars. Here's a lot of money in the stock market, 89 trillion. And this is where things get a little bit uh, intangible because you really can't wrap your head around of what's going on. The entire money supply is 95 trillion, but this green part here is what will be considered like physical, like stacks of money. That'd be like the physical money, but all this stuff in the, this dark blue and then purple is non-physical zeros and ones on a computer screen and that's really what it is and that's what banks have to deal with uh global debt uh you're looking at uh 253 trillion dollars real estate uh 280 trillion so when you start talking about to tokenize um uh, real estate uh, that could be a big boom for not bitcoin maybe bitcoin but cryptocurrency in general and then we get into global wealth but the big thing is derivatives uh, which is 11.6 trillion of what we know. And then, well, actually, the low end estimate is $558 trillion. And then, uh, just so you know, uh, you're, you're talking about things like, like, like futures and swaps and options and all those things. But the, what we know of it is about 500 trillion. And what we don't know, the things that we don't see, different uh, markets that are out there, different people just trading back and forth about whatever. It could be up to one quadrillion, which I didn't know that word existed until until I saw this uh, this graph. So, not to infuse you too much with a bunch of hopium, uh, and not to say that this is what it's going to do, because again, this is not financial advice, not a financial planner. But if you take a look at where we were, Bitcoin in 2017 bull run was only 1,200 bucks in March 2017. Uh, then you had Ethereum at around 20 bucks. That's crazy. 20 bucks. 20 bucks in March 2017 to where it went to that point. Now we take a look at what's going to happen. And we're in March 2021 and uh, we're really just getting started. So let that just sink in and uh, let me know what you think as far as your price predictions for your top uh, cryptocurrency, altcoin, digital asset, whatever else. So so that is it. So look, if uh, if you liked that video and you made it all the way in first, thanks so much for watching the whole thing. Hit the thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously and I super appreciate it. Also. Uh, if you like these types of videos, consider subscribing and I'm going to put two more up. I'm going to also put up my price predictions for 2021. That'll be in the left and then right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So first of all, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.